In the last decade, we've heard the term neoliberalism used to describe the current state of affairs. We've used it to describe Democrats, some Republicans, and a variety of, quote, news outlets. I have to put news in quotations because if I actually call something like CNN or Fox legitimate news outlets, I might give myself a brain aneurysm. I don't think my brain can cope or justify the enormity of that kind of a lie. No, I mean, there are those who call MSNBC and NPR a legitimate news outlet without the risk of a brain bleed, but that does involve a lot of mental gymnastics. If that was an Olympic sport, Americans would win gold every year. They would also be the only participants. Now, the public understanding of neoliberalism is an economic system that centralizes itself around the free market, that is, anti-tax, anti-regulation, and anti-union. And this public view of neoliberalism comes from what classical liberals believe in, right? Classical liberals believe in an egalitarian economic system with a limited government in charge of maintaining social programs while a self-governing free market controls the movement of capital. Freedoms granted by things like the Bill of Rights would ensure that people's rights are always respected. But this idea of what neoliberalism is, is as limited as the government these classical liberals want. Neoliberalism is a financial dynamic within capitalism that uses the free market to drive money into the hands of those deemed most responsible with the money. So who are these responsible people? They're the CEOs, the bankers, the oligarchs, the trust fund babies, half the characters in the movie Elysium, and anyone that uses the phrase, see, uh, we, we, we have to think about the economy first. These are all the same people that coined the term neoliberalism. These people take money and turn that money into, well, more money. How, you may ask, and that's a great question. Well, you're not smart enough to know that. Okay, see, according to neoliberalism, if you understood that, you would be rich and already responsible with this money. Now, the prevailing idea within neoliberalism is to turn money into more money. And under neoliberalism and capitalism, the cruelest thing you could do with money is let a government to use that money to clothe, feed, house its people, and ensure that they're healthy. The real way they transform money into more money is exploitation. And not just of people, but also math. Somewhere, mathematicians like Pythagoras are crying in their graves over the, a crime of this magnitude. The idea of compassion and wealth redistribution is why capitalists like George Soros are constantly worried about China's common prosperity program. This program redistributes its wealth to ensure that average working class citizens can prosper. According to Soros, this doesn't, quote, bode well for investors because it taxes and regulates billionaires heavily. This faux academic language and stoic rhetoric is used to convince the general population that investing in people rather than the invisible hand of the free market is the downfall of the human race. I mean, in reality, giving a shit about each other is the inevitable downfall of capitalism and neoliberalism. And this is why some left-wingers and classical liberals will tell you to vote for Democrats. I mean, Democrats say they want to legislate on behalf of the people, but then end up giving corporations and the already rich even more tax, even more breaks than they already have. I mean, they approve trillions in bailouts to Wall Street, but then have to spend weeks on end trying to figure out how exactly to help the people. Then they make some bullshit excuse for why they can't give money away to the people like they did the banks. But since most Republicans come out and say that they're not interested in helping people when the Democrats fail, which they do often and rather willingly, they can just blame a Republican. I mean, in America, that is called the political circle of life, the endless loop that makes sure politicians get constantly reelected, get millions of dollars from lobbyists and corporations for doing virtually nothing. Well, except helping their donors stay rich to donate to their 
campaign again. I mean, everywhere else, this is called insanity. Uh, but in America, it's called, quote, democracy. These neoliberal laws are focused on ensuring the free movement of capital between any and all borders. And while that money gets to move freely, we restrict the movement of people across these imaginary lines. And this is where the scapegoating begins. Seriously, I mean, think about the last time any currency had to get a visa or a passport to cross a border. It's literally never happened. But for me to go to Jazz Fest in Canada, I have to provide 18 different types of documentation and a semen sample just in case. I mean, just in case of what? That, that my semen could actually be d tiny bombs that steal freedoms from the heart of every red-blooded American in Canada? I mean, immigrants and refugees are painted as, as, as dangerous people by both liberals and conservatives. This argument ignores the brutal conditions these people live under thanks to American interventionism and warfare. Rather than ask why these people would need to leave their countries, we only demonize them while an ultra-rich CEO moves their money from the U.S. to the Cayman Islands or the Marshall Islands or any other fucking island. In the last few years, thanks to revelations from the Panama Papers, we know that the ultra-rich, like the Queen of England and Apple CEO, have hid trillions in offshore accounts. And here's the truly insane part about all this. Even without all that money, they're still rich beyond all belief. I mean, this shows us the level of greed these neoliberals are fighting for. I mean, under neoliberalism, what these cretins at the top did is totally legal. Until we, the people, thanks to whistleblowers, call them out on their bullshit. But you can make the argument that the movement of money, especially on a corporate level, should be heavily monitored and regulated, considering the ultra-rich are the only ones that can use that money to buy incredibly dangerous things like bombs or politicians. Now, these neoliberal laws also ensure that more money continues to move to the ultra-rich, using a core tenet of neoliberalism to convince the working class that this is a good idea because those ultra-rich people know what to do with the money. So when they're more unencumbered to become more wealthy, they're likely to spread that wealth back to the common folk. It's called trickle-down economics. And if we look at history... Uh, that has happened. Let me check. Zero fucking times. It's like never fucking happened. It's never, ever happened. In the history of everything, it's never happened, right? Trickle-down economics, which is the largest and longest con in the history of the world, has yet to work. And let's use a modern example, shall we? At the start of the pandemic, the banks got roughly, uh, the banks in America got roughly $6 trillion pumped into them. Now, if trickle-down was going to take effect, that would mean that approximately $6 trillion worth of the American people's debt would be erased thanks to the American government. But Americans are further in debt because the banks just use that money to either hoard it, buy a piece of history that would change mankind for the better, or go to space in a rocket they wished was their dick. Oh, and then they expected a struggling working class to pay off these debts in order to make themselves even richer. Trickle-down bullshit is also the, the reason the minimum wage hasn't ex increased in the last decade. That would restrict the free movement of capital into the hands of the already wealthy. So neoliberals purchase media outlets and pump lies into the brains of Americans so the already rich continue to get richer. And this is why socialism and communism have been demonized in American society. Using economic sanctions, they punish any country that nationalizes its own resources and uses that wealth to benefit the people. And if that doesn't work, then they use the, quote, intelligence agencies to manufacture a coup to install a puppet leader to ensure no border can ever restrict the movement of capital. And all of this is justified because neoliberals are selling democracy as a product to the rest of the world. When economic sanctions create poverty conditions uh, uh, that were 
in, in countries that were thriving, they say it's because they don't have democracy or freedom. And it's America's responsibility to bring that democracy to them. Because, you know, America, that's we're just manufacturing all of this democracy. And, and we have to distribute it all across the world. And this has been done in the Middle East, Latin America, uh, South America, Africa, Eastern Europe, Asia, just, just everywhere, all the whole globe. It should, I should have just said it's been everywhere. It's everywhere. Owner of the most hearts in the world and champion grouse killer Dick Cheney is quoted to say, we're an empire now. And when we act, we create our own reality. I mean, this explains the deluded nature of American exceptionalism. We didn't need robots to create the Matrix. No, we we just needed a sociopathic supervillain with two political parties filled with an insatiable God complex to gaslight the shitty reality we live in. Neoliberals chastised the election of prominent socialist leaders, even though international election observers have confirmed these elections are fair, responsible, and accountable. The only description for the American election system is a dumpster fire with Supreme Court decisions like Citizens United. America, America's election system has become a product that neoliberals have forcibly tried to sell to other nations. But no one wants a defunct, broken product. I mean, even the box American democracy comes in is already on fire. For as much as neoliberals claim equality and fairness, and how important democracy is. They also believe in inequality under capitalism is inevitable and also worth it because of all the growth society will see. Growth that the working class helped create and will not benefit from. Inequality is literally the opposite of democracy. And, you know, <laughs> equality kind of feel like I shouldn't have to say that, but I I very much have to. The next time a Democrat preaches equality, do ask them why a socialist or a green or even a libertarian isn't allowed to be on the debate stage. This warped definition of democracy is how neoliberalism will always lead to neo-fascism. And it's important to make the distinction between classic fascism and its sequel, neo-fascism. And much like most sequels, uh, this one sucks way more than the original. Now, classic fascism, which usually comes from the ashes of a failed capitalist society, creates jobs and ends unemployment by forced government labor and the manufacturing of armaments, usually to stop imperial invasions. The only thing neo-fascism and classical fascism have in common is stripping away freedoms. Since neo-fascism originates out of the inequalities created by neoliberalism, its goal is still to create a global free flow of capital where the ultra-rich control everything. So regimes work together to control other nations and regimes to maximize wealth. The proof to that is the U.S.-Saudi relationship. Saudi Arabia lets U.S. corporations do whatever they want in exchange for the infinite use of the American military. This is despite the fact that Saudi Arabia violates more human rights than America. But fascists of a feather have to stick together to form an unholy, double-headed nightmare bird that only yells about the stock prices. Right? Caca, the Dow Jones is down! Caca, caca. Neo-fascists and neoliberals see dissent as treason. Don't believe me? Well, how often has CNN or NPR talked about how powerful labor organizing is? I'll wait. They don't. They don't. They never, they never have. They don't. Usually, they don't blame the system for failing the workers, but rather the workers for failing the system. People are leaving their underpaid and overworked jobs because the working class has discovered its own self-worth. But corporate media tells us that nobody wants to work anymore. No, no, people do want to work, but they'd like to get paid what they work and do jobs that actually matter instead of constantly wreck the planet for someone else's profit. Unless we forget, Julian Assange is on track to be extradited to the United States 
by the United Kingdom for revealing that U.S. soldiers indiscriminately killed civilians and journalists in the Middle East. He also revealed the CIA is using smart technology to spy on American citizens and the blatant racism and corruption within the Democratic Party. And that's a tiny scratch in what a publisher and journalist like Julian Assange has revealed to the world about its oligarchs. And for those that and, and for that, he still remains in a maximum security prison only to be taken to another one. Julian Assange is the ultimate victim of a neoliberal establishment protecting the free flow of capital using war and corruption as its mode of transportation. But because it's a court case and not sexy enough, it's too subtle for the American populace to care about. Another example of neoliberalism, neoliberalism and neo-fascism working together is in India. The Modi government tried to convince farmers that dropping the minimum prices for their hard work is good for them and letting the market dictate the prices would enrich them. When farmers went on strike because they can smell bullshit a mile away, the Modi government and its police goons viciously attacked and smeared them. All of that violence so Western corporations can get rich from Indian farm labor. Then, both cults of neoliberalism and, and neo-fascism blame organized labor for economic downturn. That's just a part of capitalism. Look, and when neo-fascism collapses under the weight of its own greed, it turns back into neoliberalism only for the cycle to start over again. So if we want to break out of the cycle of neoliberalism to neo-fascism and then back to neoliberalism, then we must try something different. Even if you think communism and socialism will lead to your genitals being owned by the government or whatever the fuck Fox News is saying these days, we can at least agree that capitalism isn't working like even a little. I mean, the antidote to neoliberalism is organized labor. And again, we go to India to see how it worked in modern context. Just a month ago, after a year of striking, the Indian farmers won their battle. Modi had to repeal the three neoliberal farm laws. Now, he did claim he failed to, quote, convince the farmers with violence, which just means that he'll probably come back with some other underhanded tactics. But this shows authoritarian forces that the people will not back down to blatant injustices and greed. We are not as stupid and ignorant as you've tried to make us believe we are. Now, India has five economic rights the right to food, employment with full and fair wages, health care, education, and elder care. This can easily be achieved through organized labor and restraining the constant movement of money upwards. Money is a tool that can be used to improve people's lives, but it should not be the central thing we operate a society on. When we do, we see exactly what the outcome is. We're living it. But by rejecting these neoliberal norms, we can build a world where equality, democracy, and justice are the central concepts that drive our society and therefore create a better world for everyone. And that has been your dispatch for today. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you do enjoy these dispatches, uh, please do share them out. Uh, hit the like button, hit that share button. Let some folks know what we're talking about here uh, because uh, topics like this are often suppressed, especially on mainstream, um, you know, mainstream platforms like Facebook and YouTube, uh, which is why I highly recommend you guys go check out my work on Rockfin and subscribe to my stuff there. Uh, there's also a, a lot more on Rockfin or sign up for my email list uh, or or go directly to my website to get uh, all of your all of your videos and updates and all that sort of stuff. So uh, big, but the big thing to do is share, uh, share this out to with as many people as possible.